Allergy is a field that's, that's just absolutely ripe for misconceptions. Think about the fact that some things make people miserable and that same substance would make somebody else give no, somebody else no problem at all. And so we're already in an area where one person can, can be sensitive to something and the, this, another person not sensitive to the same thing. So allergy is a field that's just ripe for misinformation. And that's one of the things that we wanted to look at was why did people have misinformation about allergies? Why did they believe these myths about allergic substances? Actually, much of it comes from us. It comes from errors that were made a long time ago and never corrected. It comes from misinformation that, that is given and then amplified over time. We have problems with people being concerned about black mold. And so part of the problem with black mold is it's ugly. You go into a home after the house has been flooded and it's the walls have mold growing out of them. And mold can cause problems. It can cause asthma, it can cause rhinitis. And so it's not that big a leap to begin to blame other problems on this ugly substance that's growing in the house. So the basic mistrust of mold growing in the house allows people to believe that it causes other problems. And suddenly we're talking about black mold being killer mold, black mold causing cancer, black mold causing a myriad number of problems that certainly there's been no data to show that they're associated with these problems, but people have a fear of the mold they see the mold and they begin blaming the mold for all sorts of problems that they have. Actually, many people do have mold allergies. We can test for mold allergies, we can document mold allergies, and we can treat those allergies, be it asthma or allergic rhinitis, with medications. So that part of the problem we can certainly take care of. It's when they believe that the mold is causing other problems, other issues, that really it's our obligation to begin to educate our patients and begin to explain to them what the mold is, what kinds of symptoms that we expect molds to cause, and things where they're, to explain that there is no data for many of these other problems in regards to mold exposure.